So here's Caleb Love uh, transferring from UNC, playing for Zona this year. He is dangerous with the ball in his hands. He can score on you from all three levels, but he is very quick off the dribble, which is why you see the Washington defender giving a step here. If he's all the way up on him, then Caleb's just going to go right around you and get a straight line drive. All right, but my concern here is that if you're going to give him this space, give him the step, then you have to have better ball screen defense. This is So you can't get screened so easily right here. You have to either go over it or get under it or get through it some other way because at this point, when he hits you right here, you're no longer guarding anybody. The ball is beating you. You can't get back in front, and you can't switch back because you're not between the rim and your man. You can't switch back because you're out of position. So you have to do a better job. If you're going to give him this space, which is fine, then we have to have better communication. This guy just pops up out of nowhere. Perry Larson is coming from the baseline. you got to call screen, 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 right, 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 right. This guy has to be in a more athletic play, just make a better play on the ball here. And then hedge this. Get the ball out of his hands and... Rely on our help side defense. Now, the other thing is the help side defense isn't there. Omar Bala was doing a great job to play physical and put his uh, body into the defender and keeps him from getting to the help side on the tag. But the corner guy should be coming down as well. If the ball is on this half of the court, you should have at least one foot in the paint. You should be anticipating a downhill action on the backside. You don't need to be so glued to your guy. He's not a threat. He's not a threat without the ball in his hands. All right? If this pass goes from here to here and you have one foot in the paint, you can get there on a closeout if you react to it in time. If you're seeing the ball and seeing the man, you can get there on a closeout and put a hand up. If you have one foot in the paint, you don't need to be that close to your guy. You need to be anticipating this ball screen and this downhill action on the backside so that you can help and step up. Or if he helps and step up, you help the helper. You can't be this glued to your guy. So we get an empty corner uh, ball screen action here. And you're just reading, once you get this step, we get good contact on the screen. You're just reading the help side because this guy's not going to come all the way up to step out and defend you. So you're going to look to try and get to the rim. You're just reading the help side guys. If they step up, then you can kick out. If they don't step up, which they're probably not going to because they don't want to give up the three, then you just continue to straight line drive to the rim. So you can see uh, Pelle Larson does a good job to kind of deke and fake and stunt at the ball handler here without giving up too much space between him and his guy. And it forces the ball handler to hesitate, and it's less effective of a straight line drive because he doesn't do it as quick. And Baolo is now left to the choice. Right here, though, um, Mulcahy, you can hit him with a little float over top, or you can get off two feet like he kind of does, and go up strong. But that's a bigger defender, and Umar Balo probably has the advantage in the paint here. So another thing that you could try is use a pump fake and try and get this defender off of his feet, or use a pump fake and try and get this defender to collapse on you and get a kick out. So you got a couple options here, but going up against the taller guy probably isn't the best one. So empty corner ball screen, read the help side, dribble through it, and then Bride is not the best play to be made on that one. You can get this guy to collapse a little bit more, get this guy to collapse a little bit more if you keep your dribble alive, throw a ball fake. So this is what it looks like for five guys to be defending the ball. Balo and Larson both flying out here for the closeout. Problem is just not a good closeout, you know, pretty obviously going for the block here. And, yeah, you get burned for it that time, but still I love this concept, this um, idea of just def having five guys defend the ball and not worrying about trusting your teammates, you know, helping the helper and all that. This is just being in attack mode. Arizona gets it off the rim and just three on three break, three on three break, looking to attack. Three on three break and we're going right at him, looking to attack. Off two feet, all going off two feet, you know, it gives you a better chance to finish. It's just you're more on balance. You have a better chance of drawing the foul as opposed to going off one and being out of control. And you can go up stronger. It's just uh, it's a more 
efficient way to score the ball. Even off of a make, you know, Arizona looking to push the pace, not even five seconds, and we're just looking for a step on our guy, trusting again, throwing the ball ahead. I love this, not even five seconds, and we got the ball in the paint. Again, Arizona in transition, it's a good job by Pelle Larson to get available just by moving off the ball. You know, they're still trying to match up at this point, trying to find where bodies are going. Black might be here and uh, matched up this way. So Pelle Larson just being active and trying to get to a spot that he can score the ball in. And, you know, this is called crackback spot. You follow the ball out behind once a straight line drive happens. We don't really get it downhill too well on this transition look. But just by moving our feet and making us more difficult to defend, you know, you become more difficult to defend just by moving to a space that is less congested, where there's a better opportunity for you to score the ball. And you put strain on the defense, and look, we get a good look out of it. So Arizona comes out of the timeout up 27-11 at this point, and they put on a, a little 1-2-2, a little pressure. 1-2-2, um, two, two, you can see it here. Got the backside guys uh, all the way. He's all the way uh, behind him, actually, right here. So, uh, Washington does a pretty good job, though, to get the ball to the middle of the court and then attack off of it. That's really a, what you want to – that's a good formula for success when you're going against the zone. Get the ball to the middle of the court and try and attack off of it. So, we get a flash there. Get behind the defense and get a flash. And then look opposite, get a straight line drive. It's a really good finish, too, at the rim over a taller defender. So Caleb Love, again, he's feeling good. He's got 11 points early in this one. And he's just going to run to the open space on the court. I mean, this should be intuitive. And he's even a little late getting there. He doesn't react right away. He's still a college guy, not professional quite yet. But um, just basic basketball, running to the open spot on the court. This guy comes up for the ball screen. He brings his defender with him, and I'm getting hugged by my guy. My guy should be seen, ball seen, man, but I'm getting hugged by him, so I can just get one step, and it's a good bounce pass. Really smart play from Pelle Larson here. He knows that when he catches this ball, which he's about to do, that this big is already in a drop. He's already having to come up a little bit. He's, he's got space down here is my point. All right, he's going to catch and rip. He knows that that big is already in a drop so that he can get a real aggressive take right here on that catch. All right, that's key part number one. The ball screen fizzles out. He doesn't even get it below the three-point line. So we fill up, receive it, catch it, and this rip here is number one. Very hard, good rip. Rip baseline, don't hesitate. Get, try and get to the rim, all right? When you're ripping here, your plan is to get off two feet, go up strong, attack the rim. All right, if he gets in front of me, then I can change my plan. But that's plan A. So he does do a good job to beat me back to the baseline and wall up, use his chest to get in front. Play's not over, though. All right, pump fake, step through. A, hey, tough. All right, I mean, that's, I like Arizona. I liked them last year. I thought that they were going to do a lot better than they did in the tournament getting bounced in the first round on the first day. But, I don't know, maybe I was just a year early because this is a strong play right here. And, yeah, I like, I like what I've seen. All right, so this is good action here. You know, we get a handoff into a ball screen out of the corner, and you can see he is open. Problem is, Larson doesn't hit him in time. And the window's closed before he can get the pass off. At this point, he's open. You got to get off two feet and deliver a strong pass on the money. And uh, he can go straight up for the layup. By the way, we'll keep position, and then we'll have the shooter, uh, Caleb Love, get to the drift spot in the corner. You get to the drift spot, we get the ball here, we got a layup option, we got a dump off option, we got a three point option. Virtually unguardable if you get the ball there. It just takes us too long to get there. Larson doesn't recognize it in time, or he isn't ready to pass it off that first dribble and the second dribble is just not not good enough windows closed so not a not a great possession here from Arizona we have a transition opportunity which is something we'd like to cash in on every time we get the chance um, 
Sorry, I should let that play out. Caleb Love takes a bad shot here, falling away. Not a high percentage look, but, you know, Washington State does a good job to get back on defense and defend this. Arizona's a pretty good transition club. Sorry, I put that in the frame. Keep him out of the middle, force him left, and then you sprint back in front, try and wall up, and force a tough look. Not really sure what Arizona's looking for with shots and possessions like this one. This is off of a make. Arizona's still trying to push the tempo. They get a shot up within the first seven seconds of the shot clock. Like I said, off of a make, they're getting the ball up pretty quick. Within the first couple seconds, they're in the front court ready to go. And I'm just not sure what they're trying to get with looks like that. And there's a big difference between shots like that and, you know, opportunities like this one where you're just attacking downhill, trying to get to the rim, and trying to create good things for all five guys on the court, not just yourself. Again, this is the freshman Miles Rice just making good things happen for his club. And, yeah, there's just a pretty big difference that I wanted to point out between attacking plays like this one and the type of shots that we've seen from Arizona in the first couple clips here. Washington comes out in the 1-2-2 two, two here. You can see it right here, 1-2-2. Two, two. Yep, one, two, two. So we've seen that one option against the zone is to get it to the middle of the court and then get it opposite and then attack off of that. Another good option is getting the ball swung back and forth from side to side. You get a touch on this side and then you get a touch on the other side and then you get it back here. You put strain on the defense, you force them to work and then you take an advantage off that. We get a one-on-one -on -one look here because we got overloaded on this side and the zone is put to strain because you're swinging it back and forth and you're attacking downhill off of it and you're, you've are you got good spacing and balance throughout the court. Two and three, they got good things going on on the backside. Defense is having to defend it. One quick swing and attack off of it. Tough finish. So this is poor transition defense this time from Washington, Washington State rather. He's directing traffic. He got him on him. We're matched up at this point. We're good. But for whatever reason, he is looking to communicate to Thumber, his teammate here that he wants him to take Larson and that he wants the guy up top, and that doesn't happen. So I, th I think that is what he's saying, or he just doesn't see Larson. Whatever the reason is, it's not – it can't happen. Because if you are defending either him or him, then you need to be right where you're at. You, you can't leave this area because we're going to need help the helper spot. If he gets a baseline drive, 45 step up, and then we're going to need help the helper. You kind of just fade out here, and then you lose track of your man at the same time. So that should be your help. You should be occupying that area, especially if your man is going to cut to that area. But you're late getting there, and... We give up an and one. It's just poor spacing here from Washington. You can't expect to have four guys on one side of the court and have anything good happening. Four on four in that tight of an area just doesn't work. There's a reason that the triangle offense works and worked in the NBA for so long, and because three on three works in that space, all right. When you're, when, if you want to do a ball screen, you can't have a post and a three, like a wing guy on the same. There's just nowhere for you to go. It's one or the other. He's got to be on the opposite side here, or he's got to be on the opposite side here. And that would just give us a better chance to score off this. You're driving in with, I mean, if your plan is to get off the rim, or to get to the rim off two feet, which should always be your plan if you're attacking downhill and to finish strong and attack the rim. It's not going to work here with, you know, seven other dudes within a 10-foot space. So you'll probe, try to make something happen, and then the ball is right back out to the same spot that it was. And we get 10 seconds of basically nothing. 20. And then we got to force it at the end because we're just getting nothing. 13, 12, 11. 10. Basically nothing happened for 10 seconds. So let me not just point stuff out. Let me actually give y'all a solution. A solution would be to swing it to the other half of the court or to have better spacing, obviously. Have him, like, the ball needs to get over here and then get to here, and then we can have guys on the backside fill and all that. 
but there's nothing happening here. The play is to get to the other side of the court or to reject the screen, maybe get a kick out. You can go two on two this way. If you get Caleb Love to pull in, then you can get enough of a step on your man downhill to the right side of the rim. But the play is not on the left side. The play is on the right side. That That's my solution. Again, in transition, in the half court, if your plan is to score, then you have a chance to score. You can't score if you don't try to score. I know it sounds simple, but it's true. All right? Everything good that is going to happen in the half court is going to happen when we get the ball going to the baseline, when we get the ball going this way, when we get forward action with our offense. That's when everything good happens. That's when we get to the crackback spot. That's when this big can come and get to the middle right here so we can get a little bounce pass to him for a look over top. That's when our guards can come behind and get a crackback, get a three-point look, drive off of a long closeout, get an opposite, drive off of a long closeout. That's when good things happen when we have forward – offense when we're looking to attack the rim in transition in the half court you have a chance to score if you try to score so this is when talking and communicating is really important larson doesn't know that Keyshot johnson has already had to get through one screen and which is probably why he's looking to switch onto the ball handler he's already a step behind when his man goes to set the screen but he doesn't communicate and no one steps up to defend the role mind Luckily, Umar Bala is able to cover a lot of ground and make a good play on the ball. But that isn't always going to be the case, and giving this guy a straight line drive to the rim off of a pick and roll is not very good for Arizona. And they just need to do a better job communicating through here. If you're going to get screened like that and be a step behind when your man goes to screen, then you got to talk early and call screen right, switch, switch, switch. And you'll see they do a much better job of it on the very next possession. Larson is going to have to get through this cut right here, and then his man is going to get the ball, so they switch it, and that's fine because Larson's already a step behind when his man's going to get the ball, so they talk early and they switch it, and then we keep him in front, they call it foul on that.